Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. And good evening, everybody, and welcome into another edition of Tider Insider TV, brought to you, as you just heard, by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Don Staley and his crew do great work for West Alabama. Well, I don't miss TITV very often, but I did miss last week, taking a little bit of time off. Appreciate Stu McCann sitting in. But alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris, and I'm back tonight just in time to talk NIL. It's a brand new world, Rodney, and folks out there for amateur athletes around the country. College athletes can now get paid for the use of their name, image, and likeness. It kicked in last Thursday at 12.01 a.m., and a number of Crimson Tide athletes have secured deals in the first few days of NIL, including the sports of men's golf, volleyball, soccer, and adapted athletics as well. As of now, 20 different Crimson Tide football players have secured deals or partnerships, as they're calling them. Here are some of the more notable partnerships. Sophomore safety Malachi Moore is partnered with Milo Sweet T and our Milo's T and Cameo Sports Edits. Alabama's adapted athletic star Ryan Ellison, Alabama soccer's Macy Clem, and Alabama golf's Cannon Claycomb, and several football players have all signed with Barstool Sports to endorse that site. Sophomore offensive lineman J.B. On Cohen has partnered with GoPuff and the Crisp Clothing Company. Sophomore quarterback Bryce Young has a deal with creative artist agency CAA, a professional firm assisting in setting up NIL endorsement deals, and he has also signed with Cash App, an app used for sending money and also buying stocks. Donnie Lee is a former UA athlete. He now owns the lab training facility in Tuscaloosa. He believes NIL can be a huge benefit for young athletes and is far more than simply just a money grab. Uh, I think that it's going to be twofold. I think there's going to be pros, there's going to be cons. Uh, I firmly believe that the pros will outweigh the cons long term, but I think that uh, that's the most important part is recognizing that, hey, this isn't this isn't set in stone. It's, it's constantly changing, and uh, I trust the ability of the athletes and the coaches and the administrators to kind of be able to keep up with that, that turning tide. All right, Rod, you were on my radio show this morning on Tide 100.9 FM, and we talked some about this. We're just five days in, so there's a lot to wrap your, your yeah. arms around. At the same time, I think there were some people that felt like this was just going to be a barrage of advertising opportunities. There have been some, as we pointed out, but it's not necessarily just being overrun. I, I think people are still feeling their way, both businesses, athletes, these agencies that are representing them. So this is going to be probably more of a process than what some people yeah, expect. I, I think process is a good word because I, I really think, Gary, there's so much unknown on every side of this. I mean, Who's going to regulate things? How are we going to regulate things? Things are going to come up that we never expected questions. I think that's the way it always evolves. So, uh, again, again, like you said, it's early. It'll be very interesting to see how this thing kind of, as that process develops, unfolds. And this has been talked about for, you know, a long time, going back to the, the Ed O'Bannon case against the NCAA. But in some ways, it kind of snuck up on us. And I do think while... Everybody feels pretty positive, and certainly the athletes have an opportunity to benefit here. There are a lot of unanswered questions, and there are a lot of, you know, chinks in the armor that are going to come up. There's already things that are being discussed in regards to media opportunities for athletes outside of what the university sets them yeah. up for, podcasts and those types of things. So, you know, hang on. Uh, let's see where it goes. But I got a feeling that it isn't all going to be uh, – perfect as we go through this yeah, by any means I, yeah you mentioned something i mean you know there's a there's a protocol there's a way that they handle things in terms of interviews with the media players all of those things and now you wonder will players have the opportunities to set up their own media mm -hmm. interviews give exclusive interviews sign deals for exclusives all of those things i think there are a lot of things that, uh, you know, that is the one thing that concerns me, Gary. I know not everyone really likes all the rules and the limitations sometimes you have as a media person in terms of getting access. But at the same time, there has to be boundaries. And, and that's the one thing that you hope somehow there will be some boundaries or this thing could turn chaotic. Yeah, and we'll see day to day and week to week what goes on with this. But, uh, but it's here. 
and hopefully it'll be a, a good thing. All right, it's time now for Coach Talk. Alabama basketball guard Josh Primo will remain in the NBA draft rather than return to school for a sophomore se decision, a sophomore season. Although his decision could hinder Alabama's production in the short term, Crimson Tide head coach Nate Oates is framing this in a positive way, saying Primo leaving for the NBA is a huge selling point for the program. Here's the Crimson Tide head coach talking with Roger Hoover of the Crimson Tide Sports Network last week. We're all super happy for him. I think it'll help us in recruiting in the future. Kid comes in. Our system plays well, does what he needs to, and plays his way into the first round of the NBA. So the NBA teams are able to tell what, what the kids can and can't do on, on the video. They want to know what what do they like. And, and to talk about him, I mean, he's a great kid. I mean, you've been around him. He's polite, respectful, hardworking, motivated. He's competitive, but he, he doesn't have any kind of an attitude. Like, there's no red flags about Josh Primo. He's just a great kid. He really is, and obviously he's a very talented player. When he went into this draft process, Rodney, right, my feeling was, well, he'll he'll go into the draft process, he'll be evaluated, he'll hear that he's got a second-round grade, and he'll come back to Alabama for his sophomore season. I was completely wrong. He has put on a show. He projects as a first-rounder, only 18 years old. You certainly can't blame him for going. And as Coach Oates said, that's part of your job here as a college coaches to get these guys ready for the next level. Having said that, it's going to impact it basketball team this coming season well what do you you're going to have five new starters gary certainly and if you lose a guy like primo he's like you mentioned ultra talented you saw him as a guy that developing from last year to this year would have been uh you know a huge part of this program a huge part of this team uh, so but yeah what five new starters i mean that's a but the one thing about it is is as you know nate oates has recruited extremely well gary he's got guys experience uh he's got some really talented young players coming in and I still think Alabama would be a very good team. Yeah, Bruner, Petty, Herb Jones, Primo, and Shackelford all leaving the program because earlier this week, Shackelford officially entered his name in the NCAA transfer portal. That was first reported by Matt Zenitz of On3. He has two seasons of eligibility remaining. Last season, Shackelford started in 32 games. He was the leading scorer at 14 points per game. He also finished fourth on the team in rebounds and total 65 assists and 28 steals. Again, everybody's got to do what they've got to do. He pulled his name out of the draft, so he's going to play for another college team. Rodney, real quickly, I don't understand when you're the leading scorer on the team and you took more shots than anybody else. I don't know why you wouldn't stay in the program that you're already in, but he's leaving. Yep. You know, sometimes you have people, Gary, influence. There's a lot of talk about his dad maybe was behind this motivating him to move to another school for whatever reason. Again, I, I think it was a perfect opportunity for him right here where he is. The familiarity, he's been in the system, all of these things. And uh, it, it's an unusual move for sure. Yeah. And uh, I think he probably will wind up closer to his California home. But again, we will see. It's the new world of college athletics, not just with NIL, but this transfer portal, man, it has changed everything. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, we'll talk about recruiting as football adds another talented athlete to its recruiting class of 2022, and another one could be on the way. And Alabama baseball gets a diamond gym for its upcoming recruiting class. More on this when Tider Insider TV returns. And also, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Go ahead and call in now to make sure you secure your spot on the line. 205-348-WVUA, that's 348-9882. Or you can email us, TITV at WVUA23.com or tweet at us using the hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with more of the show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV. Welcome back to Tider Insider Television, sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports, working hard for Tuscaloosa and West Alabama. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. July 4th is certainly known for fireworks. And Antonio Kite, a four-star safety from Aniston High School over in East Alabama, created some fireworks of his own this past Sunday. Kite announced his commitment for the Crimson Tide. Although he tells Bama Insider, he actually informed the Tide coaching staff of his decision last month when he was on campus. Kite is an amazing athlete. He's only played one season of high school football, but he led Aniston on the hardwood to the Class 4A state championship in basketball last season. And I want you to look at this dunk coming up. You're seeing some football highlights here, but watch this explosiveness that um, he has on the hard court. Well, I thought we might see it. I guess we're going to look at football highlights. But it's an unbelievable dunk that, uh, that he has. And you can see that, Rodney, that ex type of explosiveness and athleticism is certainly going to, uh, I think, 
pay dividends on the football field as well. well. Look, he's got all the tools to be developed, and nobody really develops players any better or as well as Alabama. You know that, Gary, with his athleticism, a guy that's, you know, physical player too, uh, comes up, makes plays, not afraid to – to, uh, for, of contact, but yeah, I mean, his leaping ability, you mentioned that, that dunk that uh, we didn't have, but he left from about the free throw line, and he was looking down at the rim, pretty amazing. Yeah, we're going to look at some of these basketball highlights. You know, I've been telling you for many years that if you're a good basketball player and you can get on a football field, I think it gives you an edge. The type of athleticism uh, needed to play um, basketball at a high level, I just think it gives you, you know, a, a big edge on the football field. We've seen it with Henry Ruggs. We've seen it with many others. We've seen it with a lot of big guys that turn out to be tight ends and defensive ends. But Antonio Kite is raw, and here it is, Rod. That's just, I mean, that's just sick. He's looking down at the rim almost. He's raw. But he knows he wants to play football. He's already said that's going to be his focus. And I think this year he's, he's going to blow up on the field. Oh, absolutely. Look, uh, I, I think when you're talking about rankings, he's rated a four-star player. He's a guy that's probably going to move up. Don't know that he'll move up to a, a five-star, but I think he'll certainly move up in the rankings. Uh, Gary among the four-star players near the top of that list. So, uh, yeah, he's an outstanding prospect. And, you know, one thing about it is Nick Saban really doesn't pay attention necessarily to these uh, – rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, they do their own evaluations very, very thoroughly. That's one reason they hold these camps. They had, what, 10 camps, I think, total uh, in the month of June, one-day camp. So, uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity to make those evaluations. And Antonio Kite, you look at him, he's a guy that is a sensational athlete, a lot of tools. Considered, as we said, a little bit raw and kind of a rising prospect, but that's not the case for Thompson linebacker Jeremiah Alexander. He is rated as the number one prospect in the state by just about every service. Um, 6'2", 250 pounds or so, edge rusher, and he had actually committed to Alabama, then decommitted, looked like Georgia might be in the lead for a while, then Clemson. Now it looks like he's narrowed it down to Alabama and Clemson. He's going to announce on Thursday, Rodney, and we'll find out, but it looks as though Alabama is the team to beat. Well, listen, I do think Clemson's done a tremendous job of recruiting him. Todd Bates, a former Alabama player, now the defensive line coach there at Clemson, done a great job. But then again, so has Freddie Roach and this Alabama staff that's been recruiting him for, as you mentioned, Gary, quite a while. So, you know, right now, everyone I've spoken to, the sources I've talked to kind of feel like Alabama uh, has the edge, but Clemson's done a really, really good job. Yeah, and, of course, part of that powerhouse Thompson program that won the 7A state championship a couple of times, and he is one of the major reasons why. And a football player that's also a baseball player, and it's good news for Brad Bohannon, Alabama picking up the commitment of Riley Quick of Hewitt Trustful High School. A uh, big-time pitcher, and I mean big, you know, 6'5", you know, like 280. He's an offensive lineman on the football team. His older brother Pierce is an O lineman at Alabama, and he's had SEC offers as an O lineman. But when you throw 94 for fastball, you got a tight slider, probably going to get even – harder as a thrower, and he's not just a thrower. He's a pitcher. I mean, he understands how to pitch. Uh, says he wants to play baseball for the Crimson Tide, and as Alabama's trying to close the gap on these top SEC teams, he's the kind of guy that can help you do it. I think you hit the nail on the head right there, Gary. you got a big guy, power pitcher. You, you talked about him understanding how to pitch, not just a uh, a dominant presence, but he, he certainly knows, understands what it takes to be a pitcher. But, you know, not many guys pass up opportunities to play SEC football to play baseball, but obviously Riley feels like maybe this is something that he would rather pursue. So, uh, great pickup for Brad Bohannon. Yeah, who knows? Maybe a major leaguer one day. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, former Alabama baseball player gets a starting shot at second base for the Nationals last week. What's interesting about that is he's never played second base in his career. But he did all right. And up next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the information right there on your screen, 205-348-9882. There's the email address, or you can tweet at us as well. Use that hashtag TITV so that we can find it. And we'll be right back with Tider Insider Television from Tuscaloosa after this. Former Alabama catcher Alex Avila is one of the most versatile players in Major League Baseball, and he did what a lot of players could not have done. Last week, he started at second base for the first time in his major league career, after playing close to 1,050 games, most of them at catcher, some at first, some at third, he went out to second base, and you know what he did? Filling percentage of 1,000, did not make an error. He even had to borrow an infielder's glove so he could play the position, didn't have a chance to warm up, and then played great, man. That's what you call a pro right there, and that's why he's been in the big leagues a long, long time. 
All right. Uh, welcome back into the show. Alongside Rodney Moore, I'm Gary Harris. Time to take some phone calls and answer some emails. Let's get out on the uh, phone line and welcome in our pal Sammy up in Walker County. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Gary. Uh, Rodney. Uh, cucumber squash coming in. Tomatoes right on the verge. Gary. And uh, my question, guys, our secondary is going to be loaded. I know the talent, Jordan in the back, Malachi Moore, Branch, Josh Job's up for awards. But uh, Job is really an aggressive player, and uh, he gets a little too physical maybe, uh, gets a lot of calls against him. But how does it look on the other corner? Or if they could tone him down a little bit, they got the talent. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Rodney and Gary, on the other corner in the secondary? Thanks, guy. You know what, Sammy? I think Jalen Armour Davis had a great spring. Uh, good for him. You know, Gary, he was injured earlier in career, had his knee injury. That slowed him down a little bit, but bounced back really strong in the spring. And I think Jaquincy McKinstry, or Kool-Aid, as he is now uh, officially, I think, being called. Kool-Aid is uh, a guy to really watch, Gary. I tell you, I, I think he's got a chance to be live up to all the, the hype that he got coming out of high school. And I tell you, another young corner that I really like, maybe I'm biased being from the state of Texas, but I really like uh, Marcus Banks. Out of Houston, he's a guy that was having a really big spring, missed the 8A game. But I think Marcus Banks is going to be really good, too, in terms of probably depth uh, at, at those corners. Yeah, just the secondary is like, it seems like every position on that football team, a lot of numbers, which is what you want. You want to choose the best but have a lot of depth and a lot of competition. Alabama will have that in the secondary. All right, let's go to an email. And this is from uh, Greg Tuscaloosa. I know Saban has troopers go with him. Game weekends, does the team have anyone keep them safe? Uh, their security detail, as you said, uh, troopers, uh, you know, on the field with, with Coach Saban. I got to tell you, though, they're, they're taken care of. I don't know that there are, you know, official police escorts. There are for the team coming into the stadium. But listen, Greg, these guys, they know how to take care of themselves. And, and to be honest with you, I think, uh, you know, once they get to the hotel, uh, they're fine. I've never heard of any issues, maybe other than a few prank phone calls or fire alarms, things like that being pulled. But I've never heard of any really serious security issues with the Alabama football team. Yeah, I haven't heard of any security issues. Obviously, they have monitors uh, that, that make sure, check the rooms to make sure everyone's uh, doing well and where they need to be. But other than that, I, I certainly have heard of no security issues. All right, still to come on TITV, Alabama's golf alum had a stellar showing at the LPGA Volunteers of America Classic in Dallas over the weekend. And more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. In fact, phone lines are open right now. Do something about that. Give us a call at 205-348-9882. We'd love to hear from you. Tider Insider TV. We'll be right back after this. Former Bama women's golfer Emma Talley closed strong in Texas. She birdied five of the final six holes on Sunday on her way to final round 63, which was good enough to finish tied for fourth place overall at the LPGA Volunteers of America Classic. The tournament's played just outside Dallas. Her final round 63, the lowest round of her professional career. It's also the top fifth top five finish on the LPGA Tour for her, which is most ever for a former Bama women's golfer. Congratulations to Emma Talley, who uh, played really, really well. All right, uh, let's get out on the hotline again and welcome in Reg from over in Birmingham. Hey, Reg, how are you? Hello, guys. Good to see both of you back together again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs> uh, yes, how are they going to? Uh, the players are going to keep their mind on football. It looks to me like they're bidding more for bids from these companies to, to sponsor them than they are going to be playing football. It seems like a real mess to me. And I want to ask you, does the NCAA still have any, can they enforce rules, for example, with all the uh, paying players and everything, seem like they might release Tennessee from any sanctions that we're going to... Well, Reg, I, I, I think you got a valid point now. I, I think that the coaches and, and staffs are going to be concerned. I, I think that when those coaching staffs get those players in there and they say, hey, listen, the 20 hours a week that we've got you, your focus has got to be on football. And, I mean, football for the University of Alabama, preparing to win, preparing to play, not on your personal endorsement deals. I think it's important that coaching staffs handle that. We've talked about Saban and his brilliance in the past. This is something else that he's going to have to deal with. And as far as the NCAA, Rodney, um, I do wonder how much, you know, if they've got any teeth left. I mean, I already was questioning their ability to, to, to uh, enforce – you know, the rules to begin with. And now with all this money changing hands, how difficult will it be to keep up with what's legitimate and what's not legitimate? I think they're going to have their, their hands full. Yeah, I mean, these are, again, it's, it's Gary, it's all going to have to kind of unfold. And 
Uh, I'm with you. I don't know that the NCAA has any teeth, Reg, right now. But, but I'll say this as far as managing, uh, keeping the focus, as you mentioned, Nick Saban, this staff, they do a better job or as well, a good a job as anyone in the country in terms of managing these types of things, Gary, keeping their team focused. And a lot of these players, we talk about recruiting. When, when they recruit, we, we've said many times, they look for the fit, the right kind of fit, and it's not just athletic ability. They look for guys that buy into the program, guys that can fit in, uh, you know, have the right mindset, those types of things. These are things that you do when you evaluate players, when you have opportunities to meet with them, uh, have them on campus, uh, go through camps, all of these types of things. You can really evaluate what type of person you're getting, and I think they do that really well. Yeah, we said last year going into COVID, season. We didn't think anybody would manage it better than Alabama. Went 13-0, won the national championship. All right, real quickly, an email to get to from Lawrence and Hamilton. Is Evan Neal the most talented offensive tackle that Saban has had? Uh, that's a great question, Lawrence. I don't know. There have been some great ones that have come through here. He's probably in the conversation. Absolutely, he's in it. You know that, Gary. Again, you're talking about a guy with his size, what, 6'7", 360, that with his kind of athleticism, I think he's probably going to be a top five pick coming up if he plays like we think he will. Uh, yeah, Evan Neal's certainly in that conversation. Indeed. Boy, what a run offensive tackle since Nick Saban got here. All right, thanks for the phone calls and the emails. We'll be right back to wrap up Crimson Tide action on Tider Insider TV on an overcast evening in T-Town right after this. Former Bama baseball assistant Chad Oxendine is taking over the program at Longwood University in Virginia. He had previously been an assistant at Longwood and a good opportunity for him to be a head coach. He was at Alabama uh, with uh, Jim Wells as a volunteer assistant back in 2004. Recently, Oxendine was at Coastal Carolina as an assistant. Of course, they become a major power in college baseball. Congratulations to Coach. Thank you for tuning in to Tider Insider TV presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch a replay tonight after the news at 10 at 1030 or online anytime at WVOA23.com. In fact, Rodney will have a link for you at TiderInsider.com as well. For Rodney, I'm Gary. We're going to leave you with video of last week's Lou Alwatua, an event held right here at the Zone inside Bryant-Denny Stadium featuring the former Alabama and current Miami Dolphin quarterback Tua Tonga Valoa benefiting Knicks kids and the Boys and Girls Clubs of West Alabama. Have a great night, everybody.